it was a problem. <laughs> Many, yeah, uh, there's so much. To sleep. Did you get the dog? Like, that's one of the things. That's, oh, of course. Yeah, it's, it's so cool, like, that, you know, everybody can have these varying different experiences. I hope to return uh, and continue my Boulder Skate 3 campaign. Um, but I'm also hoping that Larian picks up, like, the Neverwinter Nights license uh, next because Ooh. they had Neverwinter's Nights 1 and 2. And I think 2 yeah. was the premier D&D-based computer game, like, in terms of like, maybe Mindshare or if not reviews. And to see what they've done with Baldur's Gate 3, it'd be really cool to see them continue with Neverwinter Nights. Because I don't know if you saw the the movie, Honor Among Thieves. Like, that was great. Like, all of these great D&D properties uh, seem to be, like, excelling really well. And I think that that's fun. The inner nerd in me is just like, all right, more of this. Because I, I missed out on all the D&D stuff growing up because that was during, like, the satanic panic. You ever hear about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, no, you're doing, your kids are going to become <laughs> devil worshippers playing D&D. So I, was, I wasn't allowed to, to play. So I've never actually sat down and played the tabletop, you know, version of D&D. So it's been a learning experience for me, uh, stepping into the universe. But it's, it's, it's really enjoyable. It's a well, well thought out, well fleshed out you know, kind of, kind of world. It feels, you know, very believable, uh, which, which is, I actually really appreciate, which is nice, which is really nice. The, uh, the immersion is incredible. And just the variability, like you were saying, like, you know, 10 people can sit down and play the game and describe an incredibly different game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but with star citizen, uh, what is, what is that when you're buying that? Do you just get a ship and entering mm -hmm. the world or? Yeah, you get like a starter pack ship. I think I believe it comes with lifetime insurance, which the way I guess insurance in my mind works, it's kind of like a, your subscription that it's like as if you, you crash your ship, you don't, you know, like you can you can you can claim it, you know, things like yeah, that. Yeah, so, hey, pay to fix it. I don't have to pay to fix it. No pay to win yeah, yeah. there. But uh, um, so that's so where is there like a narrative or is it just like, hey, here's your ship. <sighs> This is where my ignorance and so any, any who's like a Star Citizen fan is, you know, like I'm not speaking from a, a level of expertise. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah. only been playing for like a month and a half. <laughs> and the narrative that I find is uh, that exists from uh, YouTubers. So I've been getting into Space Tomatoes videos, who is a uh, Star Citizen content creator. And so he's posted some lore videos. So from that perspective, like it does feel like a, a lived and breathed in world from my personal experience stepping into it. I pick up some missions. They have some story and narrative to those missions and themselves and i either am successful or i die uh because i because <laughs> i suck and that's the thing i like i like it when a game you know tells me to get good you know i you know like yeah. same thing with elder ring like i i've only played a little bit of elder ring and i'm looking forward again like i always run into uh, time constraints with with anything but um i like it when a game is like yeah okay you're gonna you need to learn these systems as opposed to like okay i just press this button and one yeah there's a deep system behind it